Direct from Austin, coast to coast, and in your face, you're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Paul Watson, as we speak, has a big article, big exclusive article, coming up on PrisonPlanet.com about state, and we've already con confirmed this with state officials that we're in contact with. In fact, let's get that state rep guest on. Uh, that's a good idea. Uh, in Missouri, with the hearings they've had on my act, where the feds came in and were teaching them that the founding fathers are bad. I actually have video of that in Missouri. The police being talked at by FEMA that the founders are bad. America's bad. I know this sounds crazy, but this is really going on. So that's coming up next hour. But uh, with us, uh, five minutes in the next hour, roughly 55 minutes, uh, is Mike Rivera, what we, what really happened com. And he joins us today live here on the radio and at PrisonPlanet.tv with a whole host of issues to talk about. Mike Rivero, good to have you here with us. Thank you for having me back on the show today. It's always good to have you. I want to take a lot of calls today when you're on with us, but let's get into a host of subjects. I want to get into Bill would give president emergency control over the Internet, taking over all the private IT, a new private group of federally certified IT commissars to be over even private networks by law, a form of indentured servitude, converting the whole economy over. I want to get into the latest flu developments. They're now admitting quarantines, forced inoculations. That doesn't mean they're going to get away with it, though. It just means they're going to try it. Obama's plunging approval numbers, uh, just all the things that are happening. Uh, but, Mike, out of the gates, I'm asking you this, not having any idea, what do you think is most important right now? What is on Mike Rivero's mind? Well, I think the first topic you mentioned is definitely important. We're seeing all this legislative push to give the government control of the Internet in a so-called emergency. We're also seeing where certain organizations like Wikipedia are now going to decide for you what is trustworthy and what is not. There are going to be little color codes. We know there's a new web browser in development that will have built into it a little indicator on whether the link that is showing on your page should be considered trustworthy or not. And this is a desperate panic attack by the government and the corporate media to take us back to the 1950s and 1960s when we, the American people, would rely on government and the media to tell us what to think and what to believe in. Of course, the whole point of the evolution of the Internet and the blogs and the Alex Jones show and what really happened is that the American people are learning to trust their own ability to decide what is true, what is a lie, what is false, and the government is scared out of their minds about it. The corporate media has lost control of the American public. They're trying to figure some way they can convince you to give up trusting your own mind and go back to letting an authority figure tell you what is true and what is not true. Just last night we had another National Geographic show out there trying to resell the idea that anybody who thinks there's a conspiracy about 9-11, there's just got to be something wrong about those people and you don't want to hang out with them. And again, it's the same stuff they have been hammering before. They go right back to that no plane at the Pentagon thing and they use that as the primary lever to try and convince people that there couldn't possibly be anything incorrect about about the official government story of 9-11. They've lost control of the American people. That's why we're seeing this anger surface in the town hall meetings. The, the, the health care reform is just the fuse. The powder for the anger is being lied into war after war after war, being lied to about 9-11, being lied to about TWA 800, being lied to about Pearl Harbor, torture. All of it is building to a head right now. The government knows they can't lie to us anymore with any kind of success. They're desperate to figure out a way to reimpose that rule by lie and they're and mike and mike you're right that before you leave I, I do want to talk some about the national geographic show i did watch part of it last night they fired a missile with a pound of explosive into a chicken coop a fiberglass chicken coop and it blows up and they say see explosives would have blown up the whole pentagon i mean that was insane the other parts i saw were insane they used a few clips of the, quote, truthers, and they would put the name truther all crooked down at the bottom like it was all disjointed. Just the way they shot it, the way they did it, the way they'd zoom in on a Band-Aid on Richard Gage's show or zoom in on Dylan Avery picking his mustache or whatever. I mean, just everything, because I've had that before. I mean, I've had national media follow me around for two, three days, and the one time I wipe my nose, I see him looking at me, and I go, oh, that's going to be on TV. You know, they use every little slip-up. 
and they do everything they can, just this image, and the camera kind of crooked when they're talking to you, but when they talk to the debunker, it's all crystal clear. I mean, mm -hmm. they do this over and over again, so I want to go over that today coming up, Mike. But, but first, the power to create a national no-fly list, we always said, would be used to create a no-gun buy list. It's Kafka-esque. You're not arrested. You're not charged. You can't find out who puts you on the list. You can't get off the list. Now you can't have a job. You can't uh, get on a bus, a, go to national parks. You can't get on a plane. You can't own a firearm if you're on that list. And they now admit they've got over a million two hundred thousand in the last eight months. They made the list secret, so it, it's probably a million and a half by now. Uh, they admit they say the government and other corporations are working on these lists where they'll say your website is not true. Well, creating a list that tracks what people are saying and doing and where things are flagged, and we know Wikipedia was the model of that, where my name is spelled wrong, most of the stuff on there is a lie, they won't even let me change it or anybody else change it. I've sent them mainstream news articles showing what I'm saying is true, and they don't care. Now, this CIA, admittedly runs Wikipedia, model is now going to be the whole Internet where they take control, they place things over your computer screen, and that's only phase one. The power to track Internet is the power to then block you going to those sites. And the Pentagon's on record under the Cybersecurity Act, not just in the bill with Jay Rockefeller, but in, for those that don't know, in the actual cybersecurity announcements and symposiums that we posted the links to, the video, they brag that they're going to, quote, shut down opposition to the government in the U.S. by just shutting off IPs. And already, jonesreport.com, infowars.com, prisonplanet.com, you can't go to them at most libraries, and we've gotten the screenshots. It says this is a site that teaches you criminal skills or hacking or racism, and they're banning our YouTube videos saying racism when it's not even about race. So we can see the new tyranny. Mike Rivero, break it down. You're absolutely correct here. My own experience with Wikipedia, they used to have articles about what really happened.com. They had an article about me personally. It was filled with a lot of distortions. I went in to correct it. I'd go back. The original lies were back in. I'd go in and correct it again. They'd put the lies back in. I'd go back in to correct it. It was locked against editing. And I w I'm not kidding you. Wikipedia told me that I was not allowed to change the article about Michael Rivero because I was not a recognized authority on the subject of Michael Rivero. When I wrote back and I said, I am Michael Rivero, they simply deleted the articles. And you're absolutely right. They're trying to block websites. If you go to a U.S. military base, uh, the, the computer security there, it is insane. In fact, the, the computer security on military bases is so tight, the computers are all but unusable. And definitely you are not allowed to see any Alex Jones sites. You're not allowed to see what really happened. They are terrified the word is getting out there. And, yes, they're openly talking about finding some way to take the truth away from the people to force us to go back to living in a culture of lies and deception because that is the only way they know how to rule us. And, uh, you know, the, the thing with the no-fly list turning into a no-gun list, turning into a no-job list, this is the government using terror on the American people because you're terrified if you get on that list, your life is functionally over. You can't work, you can't travel, you can't have a normal life. This is just like they used to do in Stalin's Russia in the Soviet Union. If you got on the bad enemies list, the government would destroy your life with impunity. And everybody around would say, oh, he's on the list. He must be a bad person. Now, of course, we recognize that that was definitely not the case. We know in our own past history in the United States that the blacklists were very often, in fact, usually, tools of intimidation and persecution. And this is a hundred times, times bigger and worse than the blacklist. They're admitting it's going to be a no job, no travel, no gun list, with no judge, jury, no evidence. So... We're now being given the choice, liberty or slavery, freedom or tyranny. If we are cowed, if we let the chilling effect work and start self-censoring, they will win. But if we say, look, you can't pull us all on list, you bastards, they lose. Here's an example, Mike. Three weeks ago, a young man, junior in high school, put up several hundred posters in Florida. They came the state attorney general said they may arrest him. When that happened, everybody statewide, every major town, it was all over the news, put up the JokerInfoWars.com poster. 
Then it spread all over the world. That intimidation made it blow up a hundred times a hundred. And so now they're dropping charges, backing off, saying it's okay, it's okay. The Washington Post came out and said, don't censor it. Don't censor it. Free speech because the tyrants know we are going to win. And that's why I've said I want to live. I don't want to die. But if they kill me or set me up, I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it for humanity. I have just become a giant fertilizer bag to the mighty oak of liberty. And if you have that attitude of I'm going to fight you 110%, you can't be beaten, Mike. They can beat us individually, like V for Vendetta. Ideas, though, are bulletproof. And I just thank God I know people like you, Mike. And I thank God we're part of the 21st century, 1776. Well, my personal opinion is that the U.S. government is going to go the way of the former Soviet Union. It is on the verge of collapse economically. It has lost the trust of the American people. It literally cannot function because the only way it could control the American people was to lie. We now know about the lies. We're not going to go back to being led by lies willingly. And as a result, I'm convinced this government is doomed. There is no way to save it. And we're seeing a lot of panic on their, on their, uh, on their part right now.